www.cdbsagency.com. And we're really looking forward to hearing this. So if everybody will welcome him, we'll get to this on the road. All right. Okay. Uh, can everybody see the screen? Yes, sir. As well as we can under these circumstances. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Marlon McKelvey. I'm the president of Consumer Directed Benefit Solutions, uh, headquartered here in Memphis, Tennessee. I have been in the employee benefits business on both the corporate side with managed health care companies for nearly 20 years, and then most of the last decade I have been working on the brokerage side of the health insurance business where I work with small businesses and individuals on their health, dental, life, and disability insurance needs. As probably everyone knows, if you haven't been living in a cave for the last few years, we're undergoing a dramatic transformation on how health care is going to be delivered, financed, and uh, paid for in the United States, and this is nearly upon us. And so what we'll be talking about today is the implementation of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. And because that's such a mouthful, we will refer to that as PPACA uh, from here on out. Oh, and just to pause, you, you uh, new members, uh, welcome. I made the mistake of being at Walmart on the tax-free weekend over the weekend. I think I know where that two million missing pounds that you uh, lost is. Uh, <laughs> all right, now this, this is not my computer, so hopefully we'll, uh, this, everything will work out right here. All right, okay, now. This is my sixth sense of humor here, but actually uh, this is a graphical representation of all of the moving pieces of the health care reform law. Uh, as you might see in the great center of, everything, of the universe sits Catherine Sebelius, Secretary of Health and Human Services. Uh, we've got her good friends at the Internal Revenue Service up there sitting off on the side is Congress like they have been for a while now. Sitting on the other side is the president. Uh, we've got, uh, this is uh, that uh, IPAB, that's the death panels that don't exist, that's what that is. Um, let's see, down here, your doctors, hospitals, uh, all the various health care. There's something missing on Medicare, Medicaid, something else. Oh, 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 and right down here, way down here. Uh, that's patients, that's you. Uh, so you, you do actually fit into this uh, somewhere along the line. All right. So the Affordable Care Act, as it's referred to, was passed in 2010, and one of the key aspects for our discussion this morning is the implementation of what they're now referring to as health insurance marketplaces. So they're no longer exchanges, they're going to be called marketplaces. And the uh, law uh, requires the creation of health insurance marketplaces uh, in each state. If a state uh, decided not to set up its own uh, health insurance exchange, then the federal government helpfully steps in and sets up one for you. Uh, so for this reason, uh, marketplace management of these uh, health care marketplaces will vary quite a bit from state to state. Uh, for, you know, for instance, Tennessee, Mississippi, and 32 other states basically said, uh, no, nah, we don't want to handle it, uh, so they've left it to the feds, and that's really one of the things that's kind of upset the apple cart uh, to, a, to a certain extent. The federal government was not expecting they were going to be having to do so much of this work. Our cousins across the river in Arkansas are working in a uh, rather unique partnership arrangement uh, with the federal government, so there's a lot of experimentation uh, going on here. But uh, what's really uh, looming here is on January 1st, Phase two of implementation of the health care reform law will kick in, and this will be when these health insurance marketplaces go online. So this is going to have some impacts. It's going to significantly change health insurance benefits. It's going to expand uh, access to health insurance for the American population. It is definitely going to impact the cost and the practice of health care. It is already uh, doing that, and it's uh, inevitably going to raise the cost of insurance premiums for young and middle-aged people. As a not-so-middle-aged person, I do want to say thank you for all you young people that will be supporting me. <laughs> uh, open enrollment for this, uh, this will be a new term that you're going to have to get used to. It's going to be like Medicare for us folks. There's going to be a certain time of year you're going to be able to do this. But uh, first time around is going to start October 1st. 
and will run through March 31st of 2014. So you'll have that six month window if you're wanting to purchase health insurance through these uh, health insurance marketplaces to do so. At the end of that period, if you haven't, then the door closes and absent what we call a change of life status event, having a child, losing a job and losing your health insurance, getting married, divorced, something like that, then basically you're on the outside looking in until the next open enrollment period and then you wouldn't be able to get coverage until January 1st of 2015. The reason for that is to prevent the situation where they're rolling me in on the gurney into the emergency room and I'm signing up on the insurance uh, company's uh, enrollment form at that time. All right, so what's going uh, out and what's coming in here? Well, for generations, uh, we've been using things like experience rating, age, gender rating, industry type uh, things. Believe it or not, if you work in a coal mine, you're subject to more health issues than an architect, but uh, we won't be able to use things like that in, uh, in rates uh, anymore. Pre-existing condition exclusions or riders on health insurance policies where they say, yeah, we'll take you, but we won't cover your Crohn's disease or you know, something along those lines. Uh, that, that will no longer be possible. At being declined for coverage will no longer be possible. So you will be able to get insurance even if you are a type or a, you know, stage four prostate cancer victim. Uh, we've become used to a very wide selection of benefit plan designs and a wide range of price points. That's going to change with the implementation of these state or federal marketplaces and a new rating methodology called community rating. I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later. All policies, will, like I said, will become guaranteed issue. All policies will have to have what are called minimum essential benefits. And there's some good and bad to that. One of the weaknesses of the individual health insurance marketplace has been, for instance, that maternity has generally not been covered by individual health insurance policies, quite often making it difficult for females to exit uh, the corporate world, start a business of their own. Uh, so that's one of the uh, upsides. The downside is I'm going to have maternity coverage. I don't think I'll ever get pregnant. Um, I will also be paying for things like pediatric dental, uh, pediatric vision that will be bundled in with these essential benefits. So as in the usual case, uh, you know, some extra things get thrown in there. Uh, other uh, aspects that will be important to small businesses from two to 50 employees if they purchase their group coverage through these health insurance marketplaces they will be eligible for a tax credit of up to 50% for what the company contributes towards its employees' health insurance premiums. And then for those of us in the individual health insurance marketplace, and we are anticipating that there will be many millions of people that will be migrating from group plans to individual plans or getting an individual plan for the first time because they've been uninsurable for some time, these people will be eligible for upfront advanced premium subsidies for policies purchased through these health insurance marketplaces up to 400 percent of the federal poverty level. But the trade-off will be some limited choice in the benefit plan designs and you'll uh, be getting used to some new terminology, platinum, gold, silver, and bronze plan designs. So who's going to be impacted by PPACA? Well, depending on what state you're in, Persons under 100 or 133 percent of the federal poverty level, you'll be going directly into Medicaid. Now, here in Tennessee and in a number of states, we have kept our uh, threshold at 100 uh, percent, so we didn't change things. Other states have bumped it up to 133 percent. Uninsurable persons, so the person that is a cancer survivor. Uh, that uh, has Crohn's disease or diverticulitis or some other issue along those lines that made them an automatic decline or a high rate up in the individual health insurance marketplace will now be able to get health insurance. And it will definitely impact people with individual health insurance policies. That's about 22 million of our fellow citizens because they will see their rates impacted by this move towards community rating. Uh, and the addition of these minimum essential benefits to their benefit packages. And uh, so when you're covering more, believe it or not, it costs more. 
It will also uh, impact businesses with less than 50 employees. So the uh, health insurance marketplaces have two sides the individual side and then what they call the shop or the small business side. So this is where small business can go to purchase uh, coverage through uh, the uh, marketplace. And then it should have been impacting uh, businesses with 50 or more full-time employees, but as you probably noticed from uh, news last week, uh, the uh, president uh, pushed back the uh, employer mandate until January 1st of 2015 because of technical difficulties and maybe political difficulties, but we won't go into that. So essentially, really, the vast majority of Americans are going to be impacted either directly or indirectly by this law. So we're on our way to the promised land, aren't we? Eh, well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, as these results released by the House Committee on Energy and Commerce back in March of the, this year showed. So what you're looking at on this table, if you can read it very well, is estimated increases in, in the individual health insurance market premiums due to the uh, health care reform laws requirements on a state-by-state -state basis. As you can see, around most of the country, it's projecting increases in individual health insurance in the 30 to 100 percent range. It varies dramatically from state to state because different states have different mandated benefits that they already had in place. So some, like New Jersey, New York, states like that were already pretty close, quite frankly, to where the health care reform law requirements are. But uh, you can see like here in our home state of Tennessee, the projection is anywhere from 61 to 100 percent increases in individual health insurance costs because of the requirements of the health care reform law. And that's uh, fairly consistent, uh, as you'll see a little bit later in some other things. So, what in the world are the purposes and functions of a health insurance marketplace anyways? Well, the vision was to provide an online health insurance marketplace, a travelocity for health insurance, if you could envision <laughs> it like that. Um, they're working on that. <laughs> We're... Uh, we're still waiting with bated breath uh, here to see if when they flip the switch, anything's going to happen on the technical end of things. It is also designed to offer consumers a choice of health plans that all cover these minimum essential benefits. So, of course, there's been issues with uh, policies that uh, had very narrow coverage that still left an awful lot of financial exposure uh, to people. So there's great concern about that. Uh, as you'll see, that issue may or not have been addressed very well. Uh, it also says it's to focus on uh, people on competition on price and quality. Now, I've got to confess, I've only been in this business for nearly 30 years. Uh, I've yet to see people purchase insurance where price didn't really enter into the uh, equation. Uh, but apparently some people, that was news to them. Uh, now, this is one of the good points, to provide objective information to consumers, so, especially when it comes to health insurance. There's a lot of terminology involved there that the average lay person doesn't use in their day-in, day-out life. And uh, so when this all comes together, if it comes together as envisioned, uh, it will probably be a, a good resource for information uh, that allows people to make more objective comparison of company A to company B to company C and make their, their decisions on that basis, even though guys like I have been doing that for our customers for you know, decades, but whatever. And then to create an administrative mechanism for enrollment and premium payment, because somebody's got to take the money, get those tax dollars, shift them around, give them to the insurance companies, give them to the doctors and all this kind of stuff. And so uh, that's uh, one of the big back uh, office aspects of the health insurance marketplace and then really this is key to speed the movement towards portable coverage what that means is disconnecting your insurance coverage from your place of employment it, there was a time in our country when a person went to work for a company and would expect to retire working at that same company I think we'll all agree that that time is pretty well long since passed in the United States. 
Uh, and so many people have found themselves handcuffed, so to speak, to a job they weren't necessarily happy with anymore because they had medical issues that didn't allow them necessarily to move on and pursue their dream or go to work for a startup company that didn't provide benefits uh, to its employees yet. Uh, so if you're buying individual policies, you own that policy. If you decide to leave company A to go to company B, you just take your policy with you and go on about your business. Nothing changes. So I think that's a very positive thing. Behold, the health marketplace. This gives you a little bit more of a kind of a flow chart uh, view of things. Basically, as uh, things are envisioned, you will be able to go online, enter some your personal information, and it'll bring up for your marketplace in your state, you'll be able to compare, compare plans. For the individuals, what will be very, very important is this online calculator. And I'm going to, at the end of my presentation, give you a website address where you can actually go to one of these online calculators and plug in your personal information and see if you'll qualify for any subsidies under the uh, health care reform law. But basically, employers or individuals will be able to access these, shop and compare, enroll, and get their health insurance and to determine how much, if any, subsidies they may be offered. Okay, now this is where the rubber really starts hitting the road. What will my insurance carrier options be in Tennessee's health insurance marketplace? I didn't change this to uh, marketplace here. And for our online viewers, you need to be asking this same question over the state that you're in. You should not assume that every health insurance carrier you're familiar with in the state is going to be participating in these health insurance marketplaces that's run by the state or federal government. In fact, it's a very high probability that in many cases they won't. For instance, Aetna has withdrawn from three state uh, health insurance marketplaces just last week, one of which being their home state of Connecticut. So uh, if they figure out they can't make money playing uh, by the rules in that marketplace, they're out of it. But for us here in Tennessee, Blue Cross Blue Shield will be the only player on both the individual and small group end of the marketplace that is in the health uh, insurance marketplace statewide. Here locally, Coventry Health Insurance will be on the individual side, nothing on the small group. Aetna, not going to play in the marketplace at all. Humana, yes on the individual side, no on small group. Cigna, their whole strategy is going after the individual marketplace and the under 50. They're really kind of abandoning the uh, under 50 small group uh, marketplace in most of the country. Then there's this new thing called the Tennessee Health Co-op. Other states have variations on this theme. This is a creation of the health care reform law. It's a nonprofit type of uh, insurance entity that is created. It's going to be participating in both the individual and small group uh, areas. It is brand new. Haven't seen what their products look like. Uh, it, it's a mystery at this particular stage of the game. United Healthcare, Assurant. Health, Starmark, Trustmark, and another company you probably haven't heard of, IHC, none of them are going to be participating in the uh, marketplaces. So uh, one of the assumptions, of course, that uh, the health care reform law was sort of premised on was that there was going to be a wide selection in the marketplace. It looks like it may take a little longer to coax uh, the, all of the health insurance players into uh, the, the marketplaces. Another important thing, and once again for our online viewers of the state you're in, yes, I'm here in Memphis, Tennessee, and talking about Tennessee, but essentially the same thing is playing out in your state. So your access to d different health insurance carriers <coughs> is going to be affected by your geographic location in the marketplace. So here in Tennessee, our state has been subdivided into eight marketplace service areas, as you can see here on the map. 
and the insurance carriers are free to choose which of these eight different areas they want to market their services in or not, which will lead undoubtedly to the interesting situation where you'll have John on one side of the county line who has multiple choices uh, for uh, his health insurance and his brother Jim on the other side of the county line, nearly the same age, same health condition, same income, may just have Blue Cross Blue Shield as his only choice in the health insurance marketplace. Uh, so especially in the much more rural uh, parts of uh, Tennessee and other states, uh, that's an issue. All right, let's meet the metallic plans, kind of like meet the Fockers, I guess. I, anyways, uh, while certain variations are going to be allowed, essentially all fully insured health insurance plans are going to be built around one of four benefit levels, each of which has a metallic name associated with it. These plans will be the platinum level plans, which are pro will offer coverage of approximately 88 to 92 percent of your total cost. Gold, which will cover approximately 78 to 82 percent of your total cost. Silver, and this is really the important benchmark plan, which will cover between 68 and 72 percent of total cost. Bronze, which will cover approximately 58 to 62 percent of your total cost. And then there's supposed to be a catastrophic plan option available only for those under age 30 is a high deductible, lower cost plan. Uh, I have not been able to find any documentation in anything that I've gotten so far that this option is going to be available in the state of Tennessee. I may have just not uncovered it in the thousands of pages of stuff yet, but it uh, doesn't look like we have one. So, what do these things actually look like? If you'll remember, we were told if we liked our health insurance plans, we could keep them. Liked our doctor, we could keep them. Well, let's uh, see what's going on here. Now, a bronze plan, that's basically the low end. That will be where the lowest premium levels will be. Human nature being what it is, we have a tendency to gravitate towards the lowest price. Of course, in the insurance world, lower premium prices translate into <coughs> more cost sharing by the subscriber. So, this would be the low end, you go, whatever you want to call the cheap uh, version of things. You would have an upfront deductible of $3,500. Your out of pocket maximum would be $7,000 before you reach the level of 100% coverage. Though your coinsurance is 100% in network, 50% out of network on this plan design. And I will, and these, these are Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee plan designs here that I'm referring to. So these are actually the real thing. Uh, so you actually have to go out of, pot, or out of network to reach your $7,000 out of pocket maximum on this plan. But you'll <coughs> may notice that things like office visits and prescription drugs, while they are covered, aren't covered until you've met your $3,500 deductible. And because of the law, all preventive care, your annual physicals, GYN exams, mammograms, things like that, all of those are covered at 100%. No co-pays, no deductibles, no co-insurance. But under this plan, you would pay out of pocket for all your doctor visits, all your prescription drugs, until you met that $3,500 deductible, and then you'd be covered at 100% the rest of the year. Now the rates associated here that you see on the side, actually the rates will be on a year by year basis. I've put them down in five year increments here just to give people a sort of a feel for things here. So if John was a 35 year old, married to Sally, a 30 year old, they'd be around $400 a month. They had a couple of kids, uh, they'd be over $600 a month of uh, premium. Uh, for this plan, all of them having a $3,500 deductible. Also, you can be penalized. Uh, it's still legal to discriminate now against smokers. Uh, so if you're a smoker, uh, here in Tennessee, your rates can be uh, increased up to 15%. Now, I mentioned earlier the silver plans are important because they're the benchmark that the subsidies will be measured off of. So let's see what a silver plan might look like. And then once again, this is, there's 
there's a range, a continuum within this silver range. This is the low cost silver uh, product with this particular carrier. So you have a $5,500 deductible, an out-of-pocket maximum of $6,350. Do you have coinsurance of 80%? So you have coinsurance cost sharing after you've met your uh, deductible, but hey, we do have office visit copays on this one, $10 for your primary care, $40 for a specialist, and we do have copayments on prescription drugs, though you will notice that the field is very definitely slanted towards generics with a copay of $3 for generics, $50, $100, and $200 copayments for name brand uh, prescription drugs and injectables. Of course, preventive care is uh, covered at 100%, and this is a mystery still, uses Network E. This has not been revealed to us yet, but I can tell you with 99.9% uh, .9 uh, confidence that this has to be a stripped down network. Uh, this is what we're seeing in other parts of the country where the products that the insurance companies are offering through the health insurance marketplaces will have a smaller provider network associated with them than the very same product that that insurance company will be selling outside of the marketplace. So having access to your doctor just because he or she has been with Humana these last few years you've been using them or Blue Cross or whoever may not necessarily be guaranteed in the marketplace. So consumer beware. All right, so the health insurance uh, world after January 1st. So really there's going to be two worlds after January 1st. There's going to be the traditional health insurance world that has pretty much always existed uh, that, that you're all familiar with and then there'll be the world inside these health insurance marketplaces. This is going to require very careful and close inspection by you, the consumer. All fully insured health insurance issued after January 1st will not be able to have pre-existing condition exclusions and must cover all health problems immediately. I think we can all agree that's a, a pretty good thing. But there is a price tag associated with that and we as a society have to be prepared to deal with that issue. So really as I see it, the main advantage that the government marketplaces offer will be for individuals will be the premium subsidies that some people will qualify for if they're under 400 percent of the federal poverty level. Okay, now where are the gold and platinum plans? Well, some of these have been filed. As you can guess, the rates are much higher. Uh, didn't want to scare everybody off. Uh, and as I said, as the subsidies are going to be pegged towards the least, the second least expensive silver plan available in the state, I kind of focused on that. And from what we're seeing, the insurance carriers file uh, to offer through these marketplaces, it's disproportionately weighted towards the bronze, silver, and some of the gold uh, plan levels. All right individuals who qualify for little or no subsidy, as I kind of pointed out earlier, probably will find more choices outside of the government marketplace. But I think one of the consequences of the health care reform law, whether you are in the marketplaces or operating outside of them in the traditional health insurance marketplace, is that we're going to be seeing smaller networks, less access to doctors, more doctors are retiring early because of the demands that the uh, law and, is placing on their profession. So we're going to have some access issues uh, in the years ahead, some of which were going to happen anyways. Others, quite frankly, are being hastened by uh, the law. So we're in an in really an interesting new intersection of insurance, accounting, and the tax man. Should have had that Beatles song in there. Uh, <laughs> Never before has an American's tax status, income level, and their health insurance status been so intertwined. So from a businessman's perspective, you've got to consider tax penalties eventually if I don't offer health insurance to my employees. 
if you're big enough? Or will I qualify for tax credits for my small business if I buy health insurance through the marketplace? For us individuals looking for individual health insurance, you have the possibility of tax penalties because of the mandate requirement of the health care reform law. And then you also have the opportunity for advanced premium tax credits. What that means in English is that you buy a health insurance plan that costs $300 a month through the health insurance marketplace. You qualify for an advanced premium subsidy because of your income level of $200 a month. The government is going to send $200 a month to the insurance company you've enrolled in. The insurance company will balance bill you for the remaining $100. That's how it will work. So these are just a few of the areas where businesses and individuals will be looking for information and practical guidance for 2014 and beyond. And that's where hopefully guys like me and my counterparts will be coming in. All right. What about these tax penalties? Well, as I said, actually the law allows smokers to be penalized up to 50%. Now, different states have put different regs in place for that. Uh, here in Tennessee, they've capped the load at 15, uh, some states at 20. Other states are going to allow people to be hit for the full 50%. Uh, so uh, tobacco smokers are definitely in the crosshairs. The individual mandate, remember the law does mandate that an individual buy health insurance. In 2014, the penalty for not having health insurance is going to be a whopping $95 per adult and $47.50 per child, up to a maximum of $285 or 1% of your annual income, whichever is greater. As you can see here, it jumps up to $325 per adult in 2015, $695 per adult in 2016, uh, up to a maximum of $2,085 or 2.5% 2 of family income that you could be penalized for not having health insurance. But really, at no time, uh, as things are structured currently, will the penalty approach the cost for most people buying health insurance. And then the catch is, you really need to be paying income taxes for them to assess this penalty. So they, the IRS can't garnish your paycheck or hit your, your checking account or anything like that uh, if you get a tax refund and you're subject to this penalty, then it'll be taken out of your tax refund. I'm unsure if they're going to pe penalize people that qualify for the advanced earned income tax credit, distinct possibility. And if I've managed to confuse you, you aren't alone. Uh, this was a little earlier in the year. So basically, 82% of small business owners surveyed earlier this year admit to not having any understanding at all or only the vaguest understanding of what I'm talking to you about here today. Uh, I would really like to meet that 18% because I haven't run into one of those people yet. <laughs> now, the marketplace is ready. Well, our Cousins uh, down uh, in Mississippi, they're having a little challenge down there. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi controls 80% of the marketplace in the state of Mississippi. They're not going to be in the exchange. Uh, there was a period here where 36 counties in Mississippi were not going to have anything available in their area. Uh, finally, Humana was coaxed to come in and fill that gap. So at least Humana will be available uh, to those people. But uh, choice is going to be an issue. Are the marketplaces set? Well, we're seeing differing results you know, from different states. Colorado, uh, they were pretty pleased with their results. Almost the same date, though, Indiana and Ohio announced that uh, their filings would be showing uh, individual health insurance rates increasing 80 and 88 percent respectively. So uh, here in Ohio, they announced that the average individual premium will increase from $223 per month to $420 uh, a month. So it does uh, vary greatly from one state to the next, and quite frankly, the states in the South, Midwest, West, 
uh, probably are disproportionately affected from a price pers perspective as opposed to states uh, in New England uh, on the West Coast that uh, require a lot more benefits uh, be put in insurance plans. But the public marketplaces will have the advantage of being administered by federal and state governments, and we all know how fun that is. Okay, now, you know, I've been talking uh, about this, uh, how this works mechanically on these tax credits. So I said you qualify for a subsidy up to 400% of the federal poverty level. And that's true. Let's see, well, you can't really go there. The sweet spot, quite frankly, is going to be up to about 250% of the federal poverty level. That's where you will qualify for the highest degree of subsidies plus, in some cases, what they call cost sharing reductions, where actually a portion of your deductible and your coinsurance cost will also be subsidized by the government. Once you hit that 250 percent of the federal uh, poverty level threshold, then the premium subsidies start tapering off noticeably until you get to that 400% level where if you're right at the fringe of that, you're literally talking about dollars per month being the subsidy that you qualify for. So what does that mean in numbers that we can kind of relate to? Well, the 2013 federal poverty level for a household or an individual is $11,490. So someone conceivably could be making just shy of $46,000 and qualify for a subsidy under the uh, guidelines that I've been describing to you here. Once again, that $40,000 some odd a year guy, it would be a few dollars a month. I doubt very seriously if it would be enough to influence his or her decision uh, as to purchase coverage. And uh, then as you can see, it escalates up, so, you know, most of us have kind of a family of four, so you're looking at people that could be making over, a family of making over $94,000 a year, conceivably getting some aid, it won't be much. Okay, so a question you may be asking yourself is, am I going to be required to use these government marketplaces to get my health insurance? And the answer to that question is no, as I have pointed out the traditional health insurance marketplace for both small and small group and individual insurance will continue. And as I've pointed out at this time, it really seems like the main advantages that the government marketplaces are going to offer are going to be this advanced premium tax credit for individuals and the small business tax credit for small businesses. Though on the business end of things, you have to pay the higher premiums that you'll be seeing for small group health insurance all year and then when you do your 2014 taxes in 2015, that's when you would see your credit uh, come back to you when you do your taxes. So it's not advanced like it is for the individual coverage side of things. And something that is, uh, there's a lot of energy uh, being expended upon and will uh, be uh, something that I will be uh, making available through uh, to the members of BOCI. Many businesses and organizations are already moving towards establishing their own private health insurance marketplaces or exchanges, whatever you want to call it, uh, where you will have access to a wide range of individual health insurance products. And then if it happens that you happen to qualify for uh, the government-based marketplaces would be a good fit for you with their subsidies, then you can get channeled off to that direction, but you'll have one point of entry uh, for shopping both inside and outside of the marketplaces. So what's the uh, expected impact be on small businesses? Well, here in Tennessee, we're guessing and seeing anywhere from 15 to 50 percent rate increases on small group health insurance due to the requirements of the health care reform law. Uh, something else that will change, plans written after the first of the year, the biggest deductible you're going to be able to have is $2,000 on a group plan. 
I can tell you as a guy that's been doing this and specializing in the small group marketplace, most small groups have moved to or past a $2,000 deductible quite a while back. So that means you'll be scaling or really enriching your benefits and then they'll probably bump up some people's costs more. However, there's no tax penalty to a small business for not offering health insurance to their employees like there will be in 2015 now for businesses with more than 50 employees. So that does beg the question of what choice many small businesses may make about providing group health insurance for their employees and whether it makes sense. So what are some of the takeaways for individuals and small business owners from our discussion here this morning? Well, first of all, health insurance is going to go up a lot. Just get ready for that. The young and the middle aged are going to be especially hard hit, and this is due to what is called community rating. The health insurance rates that you've seen throughout your life have been based on a ratio of five to one. In other words, the rate that can be charged for the oldest person or oldest age bracket can only be five times that of the youngest age bracket. Community rating crunches that down to a three to one ratio. And wait, what that's working out in the real world is it's pulling up rates significantly for 20, 30 something year olds, somewhere around 40, 42 is sort of the breaking point. Uh, so they're seeing their rates go up significantly both on the group end and the individual end. Whereas <clears throat> us more mature people, uh, we may actually see our rates level off or decline. So uh, the advanced premium tax subsidies, as I said, make the government marketplace, uh, marketplace attractive to individual health insurance at some income levels. Group insurance may no longer be the level for if you have low income. Okay and young and healthy groups may be getting better rates and better benefits outside of the marketplace. All right, so what's a small business to do? Well, I'd audit your plan, consider going self-funded to avoid much of the requirements of the healthcare reform law. That is now possible, down all the way to five employee groups. Talk with your carrier about offering a longer contract period. That's being offered. Request an off anniversary renewal from your carrier. Implement your own or join a private health insurance marketplace via a defined contribution plan. Terminate your group coverage and let your employees buy their own individual health insurance or purchase your coverage through the marketplaces. All right, so get prepared. We're in for an interesting ride in 2014. I want to thank each and every one of you uh, for your time today. Now, if you've got a pen and paper handy, do a Google search on Kaiser, K-A-I-S-E-R, Family Foundation, or KFF.org, Subsidy Calculator. I would do the KFF.org Subsidy Calculator in a Google or a Bing search. It'll take you right to that. And then you can actually plug in your own personal income and your family situation and see what your results would be. Once again, I want to thank you for your time and attention this morning. My name is Marlon McKelvey. I'm the president of Consumer Directed Benefit Solutions. I'm your man with the plans for your benefit needs. Thank you.